Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, we shall see how the massive dispersion relation that connects the rest mass m and momentum p of a relativistic particle to its total energy e is abused to arrive at the dispersion relation of a photon, which is a massless quantum mechanical particle. We have explained how to derive the relativistic dispersion relation of a massive particle in our last video. You can check it out from the i button. Now, the misuse is in context of the low mass limit of this massive dispersion relation. Consider a relativistic particle with a very very low rest mass, so much so that the ratio mc by p is much smaller than 1. mc much smaller than p, can that really happen? Of course. We have discussed in the last video that smaller the momentum p compared to mc, more non-relativistic the particle is. This is the other extreme. Bigger the momentum compared to mc, the more relativistic is the particle. Actually, with lower mass, it is easier for the particle to go to a higher velocity and behave relativistically. Here is what really happens to the p by mc ratio with lower masses. Since relativistic momentum is gamma, the Lorentz factor times the rest mass of the particle times its velocity, in the mc by p ratio, the mass cancels out, leaving c upon gamma v behind. Even though the mass is out of the scene, because of its extremely low value, the particle's velocity can grow almost up to the speed of light. Never exactly equal, of course, but close. Now, at the higher side of the relativistic velocity, beyond the 50-60% of the speed of light mark, the Lorentz factor rapidly grows from 1 to some extremely high values, making gamma v way bigger than c. Thus, in the low mass limit, the ratio mc upon p can be much smaller than 1. Now, to implement this low mass limit in the dispersion relation, we take pc out of the square root and get 1 plus the square of this very small fraction mc upon p inside. Since it is square of a number already very small compared to 1, it can be dropped. Thus, the energy-momentum relation for a very low mass particle moving at a highly relativistic speed becomes E approximately equal to P times C. Now, E equals PC happens to be the energy-momentum relation of a photon too. So, we can say a relativistic particle of sufficiently low mass has an energy-momentum relation almost like that of a massless photon. A perfectly nice statement. The misuse is to turn this around and claim that the massless dispersion relation of photons can be obtained from the massive ones by putting m equals zero. Unfortunately, you will see this done in almost every textbook on modern physics and relativity. But why is this a problem? Putting m equals zero in the relativistic dispersion relation of a massive particle to get the E equals PC relation for a photon looks simple enough. Why am I making a fuss about it? because of the following reasons. First, if we look a little closer, the math does not really work. It so happens that the dispersion relation of a massive particle intrinsically depends on the definition of momentum p being gamma times the rest mass times the velocity. So, in the dispersion relation, the particle's rest mass m not only appears in the rest energy term m square c to the power 4, it is also hidden in the p squared c squared term. Thus, if we use it for a photon which is massless and moves with speed c, the rest energy term goes to zero, but the remaining term p times c takes a zero divided by zero form. Look carefully. p, which is supposed to be gamma mv, has m equals zero in the numerator, and gamma, which is 1 upon the square root of 1 minus v upon c squared, for v equal to c, makes the denominator 0 too. So, according to the massive relativistic dispersion relation, the photon energy should become 0 divided by 0 times c squared. To get the claimed E equals pc, obeyed by a photon, we put m equals 0, but then very conveniently forget that p is supposed to be gamma mv. This mathematical scam actually hides the conceptual crimes we are committing by using the massive relativistic dispersion relation for a photon. 
Let's check our misdeeds. A particle which is very very low mass still has a non-zero rest mass, however small, and a corresponding rest frame of its own. In this rest frame, the particle obviously does not move in any of the spatial directions, but just to be present at all times in its rest frame, it must keep pace with its rest frame time or proper time. So it moves along the time axis as its rest frame clock ticks. Thus, its space-time trajectory or world line is a time-like curve by nature and we can define its proper time as the space-time interval measured along its world line. You can look up the concepts of time-like curve and proper time from our earlier videos linked in the i button and description. In contrast, the photon is strictly massless. It neither has a rest mass nor a rest frame of its own. To convince yourself, remember the second postulate of special relativity. It says, light signal must move with respect to all inertial frames at a universally constant propagation speed, meaning there is no inertial frame where the photon can be at rest. So, there are no inertial frames where the space-time trajectory or world line of a photon is purely in the time direction. Its world line can never be time-like. Consequently, we cannot define a proper time along a photon world line. In summary, a massive particle of however low mass has a proper time along its world line, but a photon being massless cannot have one. Now, the relativistic energy momentum dispersion relation for a massive particle comes from the expression of its energy and momentum. Both are defined classically using the Lagrangian of that particle. And to construct this Lagrangian, we have to heavily rely on the particles having a non-zero rest mass and a well-defined proper time. You can always refer to the video in the i button for details. Naturally, the photon, an inherently quantum mechanical particle with neither proper time nor rest mass, does not really come under the purview of the classical relativistic massive dispersion relation. So we should not expect to get the photon's energy momentum relation from this. In fact, we cannot even define the energy and momentum of a photon at a classical level simply because the idea of photon as a particle carrying a packet of energy E and a momentum P is not classical in nature. It came from the likes of Max Planck, Einstein and others as a core concept sitting at the very heart of quantum mechanics. The photon, by definition, is a quantum mechanical particle. To get its energy momentum relation, we have to look back in the 19th century when we understood light classically as a continuous electromagnetic wave of some frequency nu and wavelength lambda carrying some energy E. This notion came from the observations of interference and diffraction properties in wave optics. Experiments with radiation indicated that light imparts some momentum on the surface it falls on. The relation between momentum density and energy density of the light beam, that is, energy and momentum content in unit volume of the beam, derived using classical theory of radiation, was experimentally verified in the year 1900 itself. It's just that there was no notion of photon, the quantum mechanical light particle back then. In contrast, the concept of photon as a discrete particle of light carrying a quanta of energy and moving at the speed of electromagnetic wave was coined in 1905 by Einstein to explain the phenomena of photoelectric effect. Following the footsteps of Max Planck, Einstein proposed that the energy quanta E carried by this light particle is proportional to its frequency nu. This was experimentally verified and the proportionality constant is known as the Planck's constant. This relation says light beam of a given frequency nu can only have energy in integer multiples of h nu. That is, let's say 29 h nu if the beam happens to have 29 photons, but not 29 and half h nu. This makes photon energy discrete and quantum mechanical in nature. Since frequency times wavelength gives the speed, we can also express the photon energy in terms of its wavelength and speed. 
Now, if we go back to the classical relation connecting the energy and momentum densities of radiation and think of energy and momentum content in unit volume of the light beam and divide both sides by the photon number density that is number of photons in unit volume, the energy and momentum of a single photon is related by the same E equals PC equation that we had for the classical radiation. But for a photon, this equation is quantum mechanical in nature because the photon's energy is given by the Planck-Einstein definition of a discrete quanta of energy E equals HC divided by lambda. From this emerges the quantum mechanical definition of the photon's momentum in terms of its wavelength as P equals H upon lambda. So you see how the seed idea of photon momentum being P equals E by C came from the classical radiation theory and its quantum nature is manifested when we express it as Planck's constant upon lambda. Obtaining it from the relativistic massive dispersion relation as is widely practiced is actually a bad move where we just got lucky to arrive at the correct result. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have got the worth of your time. You can check out the video on the left to see how the Lagrangian of a massive relativistic particle depends on its stress mass and proper time. The one on the right explains how we define the energy and momentum of a classical particle. See you there. Bye-bye.